All right, we're running through the what not to do's so that I can go and do them. Been wanting to do this this one for a while but we're finally doing the video on what not to do when you're learning how to skimboard and how to avoid accidents how to avoid getting hurt skimboarding is a pretty dangerous thing so we want to keep you safe and just give you some tips on how to not hurt yourself dude that's why i just grow my hair out i just hair i hair farm it's natural sunscreen over that nose. yeah that's not a bad idea dude i'm about there i can do it oh <laughs> But yeah, first things first, wear your sunscreen. Yeah, don't get I think, I think all of us skimmers are gonna suffer more from skin cancer than shinners probably at the end of the day. So that's a good important one. Second of all, being safe around your board is, is, or just knowing where your board is, is really, really important. A lot of people that I'm teaching, they're not super aware of the wave that's gonna wash the board into their, into their legs or into them. Yeah, having that wave knowledge too kind of helps. So, if you shoot out your board, we can do an example of this too. But if you shoot out your board and you see a wave coming, that wave's likely gonna wash the board straight in from where it is. And you do not wanna be standing straight in from where you have lost your board. Cause it's gonna wash into your shins and you're gonna be really bummed. Yeah, the most, most important thing is get out of the way of your skimboard. Do an example of that right now what not to do. Am I about to just get the worst shinner ever? No. <laughs> so, this also goes hand in hand with being aware of where your board is. Make sure that if there's, if there's people swimming by you or people playing on the beach near you, that you don't send your skimboard off into, the, into them. So, that's a common thing. I think it, every single person who's skimboarded for long enough has probably hurt someone on the shoreline at some point. And uh, it's really good to just keep your distance from other people swimming, other people even laying up here on the sand. It's really easy for your board to get caught in a wave and for it to wash up and hit someone else. So yeah, number one thing is just know where your board is, know where it's gonna, predict where it's gonna go and try to prevent it from hitting you and other people. That's key for everyone it, having and fun. And if it comes close to you, or, I mean, if it comes close to someone you see, mm -hmm. yell board. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point, yeah. Always yell board. That's like, that's what, at the skim camp, Polo, Polo always teaches the kids that. Like, first thing, when everyone's starting to learn how to skim, as soon as you see a board go flying, you gotta yell board. Or if you lose your board, and it's gonna wash up and maybe hit someone, yell board. Here's what not to do. See these kids right here? Don't go skim by them. Here we go. <laughs> All right, another not to do. Leave your board facing the sun where you've waxed it. Um, so it's kind of hard to do an example of that now because the sun's not out. Yeah, but the sun is right okay. there. Yeah, so the sun's over there. And if there weren't clouds <laughs> and I had my board facing the sun or even like if it's in the middle of the day and I have my board like this, the sun's gonna be beating down on the top of my board where the wax is and it's gonna melt. Easy way to prevent that is flip it the other way around where there's no wax and make sure that the side of the board where there is wax is in the shadow of the sun at all times or else you will end up with a very sad wax job where the wax just starts dripping down your board onto your pads into your car that's the worst is you leave your board facing the sun in your car Oof. you can just say goodbye to your car seats I got the biggest sand crab in existence. how many chick-fil-a dinners will i have to buy you to no no how many chick-fil-a i'm not eating more <laughs> His, his brother just ate a sand flea. Not a, cr not a crab, but a littler bug for one Chick-fil-A dinner. Another thing that you should not do when you're first learning how to skimboard is jump on your board and stand straight up, tall. You gotta bend your knees. If you don't bend your knees, you're gonna 
or if you are standing straight up on your board, you're more likely to fall and you're gonna slam on the sand harder because you're you're higher up when you're when you're not bending your knees. But if you bend your knees, you're closer to the ground. When you do fall, I think you can you can kind of brace your fall better and you're just closer to the ground. So you don't hit the ground as hard. That's an, that's another big one that I see a lot of people do wrong is they're standing as soon as they jump on their board, they're like locking and like just automatically slide out and then they try to catch themselves with the wrists and they hurt the wrists. So that's another big one, big no-no. All right, so if you're a new skimboard owner, another important thing you can do to just keep your board in good condition is to not like drop it on the concrete. I know that sounds pretty intuitive, but like a lot of kids will kind of just like, you know, set their board in the, on the ground like this and after you do that a lot of times, it kind of chips away at the tail or nose of your board. So don't really drop it. Don't put it on the concrete. Another super important one, just to keep you going straight in the direction you want to go is keep those arms up. Your shoulders always start where you're going to go. And the direction you're facing is where you're looking is where you're going to go. So. Always, you know, you might have to look down to get onto your board. That's totally fine. Look down where you put your feet, but once you do that, look up to where you're gonna go and keep those shoulders um, kind of pointed in the direction in which you're gonna go in, or which you want to go in. Don't go like this. It's not good for you. It's not good for anyone. It's gonna make you turn, turn backwards and fall off your board. I think Sears is gonna go for it. Let's see if Nice one. Holy. Oh, it's what you want to do. That is what you want to do. That was sick. That's what happens when you have your shoulders when you're looking this way. Don't look that way. Look where you want to go. Or else you're going to turn backwards and flop on your back. Another tip for avoiding bad slams is look beyond the wave that you're going at. So Brandon just mentioned this to me for his kids and I've seen a lot of kids run, go for a small little wave without looking at what's behind it. And sometimes there's a big wave behind it. So with anyone that I'm teaching, I make sure that I'm sending them on little to no wave and that there's little to no wave coming in. And it does take some skill to be able to like read, read sets or know that there's gonna be a big set of waves. So you gotta just look well beyond the little wave you're going for, see what's behind it, because sometimes you can surprise yourself, get out farther than you think you will. And if you're three foot tall, you won't be able to touch the bottom and you have a big issue. There's a big wave breaking on your head. So that's a, that's a really important one, especially for the little guys. So. Another not to do when you're skimboarding. I know in snowboarding and maybe even, yeah, pretty much just snowboarding, they wax the bottom of their boards and helps with boxes and rails. In skimboarding, you do not wax the bottom of your board. You put wax on the top of your board because it helps your feet grip on the top. And you want the board, the bottom of the board to be left as slick rick as possible. Another thing that's going to help you a lot with learning is traction pads. So traction pads are these little grippies that we put on the board. Um, they're soft, you can squish them, and they have these things on the back called kicker. Make sure that your, that your foot doesn't slide off the back. It's kind of just like a placeholder for where you want your foot to go um, when you're going to do a turn. So when I'm going out to a wave, I'll actually slide my foot all the way back here and do a turn with my foot on the very furthest part back I can. And then this little guy is an arch bar. So it's an arch bar because that is where the arch of your foot's gonna go. And these help a lot too because you, when you place them down, you're placing them perfectly down the middle of your board. 
it helps you because you know that your foot's going to be in the middle. When the arch of your foot is over your arch bar, your foot's perfectly in the middle of your board. And that helps a lot with learning because you really want your feet to be in the middle. It's going to help you with balancing. If your feet are off to the side at all, it's really easy to catch rail and really easy for you to just go flying off your board. So I recommend getting these if you're learning. Arch bars help keep your feet in the middle of the board. When you put these pads down, put them pretty much as far back as they can go before the rail starts um, curving down. And that just helps, uh, helps you scoot your foot back as far as it can go and gives you more control on your turns, more um, maneuverability as well. The farther back you can push your foot, the easier you can turn your board. If you, if you can place your foot really far back on the board, you can get really vertical and do a turn almost like underneath the lip of a wave. Not that you're going to be doing that when you're learning, but further down the road, it'll help out a lot for sure. All right, we're running through the what not to do's so that I can go and do them. Don't drop your board from super high up so you don't kick it on the way down. Drop your board low and prevent it from getting all wobbly from the wind or something. The higher you hold up your board, the more time there is for the board to get all off kilter after, after it leaves your hands. So hold your board closer to the sand when you're first learning how to drop it. I even like to bend my knees a little bit when I'm dropping my board. So my board's even closer to the sand. And that's just going to prevent the board drop the board and it sticks in the sand like that, you kick it and that's no fun for your feet. You're going to end up with what we call a shinner. I've had quite a few shinners in my time. They're not fun. So you can learn the hard way or you can just bend your knees a little bit and drop your board low. All right, another not to do when you're, for your first time skimboarding. Don't run full speed into it don't even need to run that fast when you're first learning. You could practically walk and get onto your board and probably get, a, get to a wave. So the faster you go, the harder you're gonna fall. Start out slow and am I gonna go run right now? Okay, don't do this. I didn't want to fall. <laughs> but yeah, watch how, watch how slow you can walk too to catch a wave. You can literally go like this slow. Yep. Don't run fast. Just don't do it. Now, if you're interested in learning how to drop your board and want to know more, more tips on that, you can check out previous video I did on that here and that's much more in-depth uh, tutorial on how to drop your board. Another little scary scenario that you can put yourself in when you're learning how to skimboard is when you get your first glide off the sand and out into the water, you're gliding, you're skimming on the surface of the water and you're going out to a wave. Sometimes people will start to turn in the direction they want to go and then they'll slide out and shoot the board out behind them. Um, I'll try to do an example of that later, but that's kind of scary because if you're going out to a wave and, and then all of a sudden your, your back's facing the wave and your board is behind you, then the board can get caught in the wave and come back and hit you. One way to prevent that you start sliding out, try to fall very far away from your board, or when you do fall, just move to the other direction of where you bailed your board. As with any, anything in skimboarding, if you fall, just get the heck away from your skimboard. These things are pretty sharp, they're pretty unforgiving. That is the one thing that deters a lot of people from skimboarding, is as soon as the board hits them, it's pretty much game over. Like, it can really, really hurt and really put a damper on your day or your shins. So that's an important one. Okay, so a way to avoid the purpose of Cooper. 
you you just want to bend your knees a little different. <laughs> Try to bend this back knee in a little bit. This this is gonna prevent you from looking like you're doing the squat poop. You don't want this knee. You don't want your knees pointing in two different directions. You want this one kind of like bent in, pointing in the direction you want to go. Okay. Hopefully, we prevented a couple injuries with this video. If you're interested in learning other tips on how to skimboard, you can check out some of the videos I made in the past. They go more into depth on what to do as opposed to what we don't want to be doing. So check those out. They should help. There are some videos on how to reach waves, how to get far out and catch a wave. Um, some tricks, a bunch of stuff to go check out. And we hope you like this video. Would love it if you subscribe to our channel because we're going to be doing more little tricks. What are we going to be doing more of, Andre? Tutorials? More tutorials, thank you. And uh, on that note, know the weather. If it's going to be cloudy and cold, yeah. bring a wetsuit. Bring a wetsuit. It's always a little chilly around sunset. The water is actually nice though. It's about 71 degrees and it's July something, that's pretty good for this time of year. So I'm just kind of being a wuss, <laughs> but I could definitely use a wetsuit top right now. That'd be nice. All right, we're done. Thanks for watching. And we'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. It goes a long way for us and keeps us incentivized to keep putting out stuff and good stuff at that. So, all right, that's my little spiel. I'm done. <laughs>